ship around I'm leaving this game one step ahead of you And you will not hear me cry So do not sing the blues Like my buddies We now review the movie Jonah Hex, which stars Josh Brolin in the title role. It is very loosely based on the comic book character Jonah Hex, a man who solved most of his problems with a gun. Bullshit! He solved all his problems with a gun. Hell, he could use one to cure his erectile dysfunction. What? Guns help him pull his trigger? In this film, Hex must defeat a terrorist, played by John Malkovich, who is threatening the entire country with a cannon, and is considered an actual threat. Now, let's pump some lead into this movie as I throw it to the round table. There is... So much of this movie that I can't remember. I'm kind of shocked. It didn't really try to draw us in. It was so utterly forgettable that even the truly bad parts just could not keep my attention. In that regard, it's not as bad as Andromeda Strain. It wasn't unwatchable. By the end of it, I was already forgetting how the movie went. It didn't have a proper structure to it. Let's look at the first bit of stupidity. We have Jonah Hex riding into town, with three bodies being dragged behind his horse. He's going into town to collect the bounties on the three and a half bodies he brought in. He brought a head in a sack. They were never going to pay him. They had a coffin ready for him as well as the four other bodies. What ensues is... A random epic gunfight of bullshit. There are two incredibly stupid scenes that I can remember off the top of my head. At the start of the fight, Hex removes covers from the sides of his horse to reveal two Gatling guns attached to the horse's haunches, and mows down people with these guns. The horse is fine with all this. He does this when the horse rears. What horse is going to rear up with those things attached to it? And dear God, they're in the southwest. That horse would be sweating its ass off carrying those things. Those things weigh hundreds of pounds. How is he firing those things? There were cranks. Wow. This is getting worse and worse as it goes on. I think I forgot that to protect my own sanity. Hey guys, guess how much each of those guns weighed? 750 pounds. Each. It's a total of 1,500 pounds. Plus four bodies weighing 180 to 200 pounds. So that's about 2,300 pounds being carried around by the horse through the desert. With no help or cart. That horse is going nowhere. And then on his way out of town, he shoots a lamp and causes a massive explosion. Boy, we don't take very kindly to physics in these here parts. Considering the logic of this movie, I'm willing to accept that it was powered by a small nuclear reactor. Nope, it was powered by a dragon ball. So then Jonah needs to go visit his hoe. I do not mean this as a derogatory statement. She is literally a whore. Played by Megan Fox. X, look what you make me do. Fox probably has the strongest character in this film. Her character is actually quite good. But I think that may have been an accident. They don't seem to be writing her like that intentionally. But from now on, I'm going to be a little less skeptical if she's in something. Yep. She was shockingly good. Her role had nothing to do with the character she was supposed to be portraying, but she was at least enjoyable. She tells her John to fuck off so she can tell Jonah that she wants to go with him. To which Jonah responds, I'm that man of the West. They're then interrupted by a bunch of goons who demand he help them. To which he responds, fuck off. You've got to respect a man who answers six Springfield rifles with a pistol. Then he accepts for some reason. Was there a reason? They mentioned Quentin Turnbull. Oh yeah, they mentioned QT. QT McWhiskers. QT McWhiskers was his commanding officer in the war and ordered him to burn some buildings down, and he refused. The president sends Hex to a camp where they are torturing a prisoner. The president seems to think that you're special. Magic even. Let's we'll see about that. Job recently started the Alliance of Magicians, an organization that blackballs any performer who reveals a magician's secret. But like we've said, they were torturing a prisoner. Hey, the proper term is enhanced interrogation. 
Well, it was super duper 100% extreme interrogation because he's dead now. Where is the girl? And they found out nothing. So here's where we get introduced to Jonah's superpower. I don't have any superpowers! It's the reason I liked him in the comics. What my colleague is trying to say is that in the comic book, the only power that Jonah retained is that he was a badass. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Yosemite Sam? Well, since it's a superpower, I have to dissect it. He temporarily binds the souls to their corpses. One of the most important aspects of this power isn't stated at first. The longer a body has been dead, the longer he can hold a soul to the body. The longer he holds a soul, the more they will hear the hounds of hell. Sycamore! And the more the body and soul disintegrate. He delays this by pouring dirt over the body. This is explained by the statement, Dirt likes dead, and dead likes dirt. Jonah then rides off to some sort of western arena, where a man was put into a ring with some sort of snake man who fuels himself with snake venom. And spits corrosive acid. And is all wiggly. Jonah proceeds to burn the arena and make friends with the dog. This is important. Then it cuts to being John Malkovich, who hijacks a train with three guys in masks, carrying dynamite. Why did they put on masks when they had been on the train the entire time without them? People will still recognize those sideburns. This is known as the transitive domino mask theory, where if you're wearing a mask, no one recognizes you. Thus, if you put one on, they won't remember who you were. Then they steal the components off the train. Malkovich goes to see a senator who, who's trying to overthrow the country or something. Then Jonah goes to visit his former lover, Jeb Turnbull. He goes to a confederate graveyard and the two of them have a lover's tiff. It just occurred to me that Jonah could potentially be the most successful necrophiliac ever. Apparently Jeffrey Dean Morgan here is upset that Jonah is somehow responsible for his death but is perfectly fine with giving him the info his paw is building a super weapon to overthrow the government with one attack. Jonah then places his good buddy back in the ground and goes off to kill his daddy. Are you serious? On the way, he stops off to pick up some of the coolest and simultaneously stupidest weapons called the dynamite crossbows. From a weapons maker played by Lance Reddick. What is with the cameos in this film? Now, there's a game called Gun. In that game, you get a weapon called the Dynamite Bow. Now, you have an arrow strapped with dynamite, you shoot someone and they blow up a period later. With a crossbow, you've got to worry about jamming, the fuse is not lighting, and the bonus fact that dynamite is not an impact explosive. After he empties the crossbows, he gets shot by a shotgun. And he is phased by this. Another superpower and vulnerability. Tis only a flesh wound. Jonah then escapes from a fight with my favorite character in the movie, an Irish man named Burke, played by Michael Fassbender, by shooting a box of dynamite and scattering off. And Burke doesn't run to the box and pull out the fuse that was lit. Instead, he juggles it until he tosses it into the air where it explodes. And then we get one of the hardest to understand, most confusing, poorly edited piles of nonsense in this entire movie. As he's lying on the ground, he enters a world made of red. Do you get that it's King Lear? That was red dirt. He was buried under it by a small amount. It was a pointless pile of confusion. He fights Turnbull, gets rescued by Indians, now he's surrounded by red in both worlds, and he coughs up a crow and is fine. Sometimes, just sometimes, the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. Jonah then proceeds to jump on his rocket horse and homes in on Quentin Turnbull, where we get introduced to the biggest pile of stupid in the whole movie. His super weapon is a Gatling cannon. Now let me explain why this doesn't work and is stupid. To make cannons of this size in this period would have required a lot of heavy materials. To mount and rotate these cannons would have required a mechanism and a power source that was outside their means to do. Not to mention that the entire interior of Turnbull's ship was apparently a mechanism for loading the cannon. And when he was testing it out, he fired it six times into a town, 
and the people go out to investigate. You know it's a boring fuck town when you go out to look at a cannonball that's hit your town rather than running away. To be fair, they knew he fired six shots, not five. He then proceeds to fire the dumbass ex machina of this movie. The Dragon Balls. That's right, they've been found again, and his wish was to blow shit up. Pretty orange balls. Because when he fires them from the center cannon, that's right, it's a seven barrel cannon, its impact sets off the other cannonballs, which were apparently triggered explosives, wiping out the town. Jonah healed during the test firing and used his homing missile horse to get to Cutie McWhiskers. At which point he tries to infiltrate the ship. I like to think of her as my floating fortress of fun. Meaning he would beat people to death and shoot others. Yeah, specifically Burke. He gets into a fight with Burke, kills Burke, then brings him back and disintegrates him. Let's not forget how he killed Burke. He held him up to a slow-moving propeller, and it chops the back of his skull off. He then tries to kill Turnbull, and Turnbull plays the Have Your Girlfriend card. So QT McWhiskers takes Megan Fox hostage, causing Hex to surrender. Turnbull chains them up on his ship. That's super villain stupid right there. Wait, aren't you even going to watch them? They could get away. No, no, no. I'm going to leave them alone, just gonna assume it all went to plan, what? This is supervillain protocol. You don't kill your adversary, you chain them up on the ship with your super weapon. He had the supervillain checklist! He had the super weapon, he had the team of minions willing to sacrifice themselves for him, he had the one competent minion who died in battle slowing down the hero. He kidnapped the hero's girlfriend. All they had to do was chain them up near the self-destruct, which he did. And he had to raid his Superman plan. He did that too! Check and check! Let's not forget about the oh-so-useful military forces that showed up. They politely asked him to surrender, and he shot them, and finished them with the Dragon Ball. So, of course, following superhero protocol... Ah, wait! Jonah didn't follow superhero protocol. His girlfriend broke damsel in distress protocol and grabbed a gun and killed a ton of guys. She was awesome. So Jonah fights Turnbull and starts getting his ass kicked. He starts to stroke out and goes to the Red World. And then he starts to win in both worlds because he's fighting him in two places. What the fuck? Of course he wins the fight and triggers an explosion. And even though the ship is loaded with cannonballs and dragon balls, it doesn't launch any cannonballs to kill anyone. It launches fireworks. Action will be cliche number 533. Any kind of explosion can cause fireworks. And he rides off into the sunset and cliche number 425. And he is offered the title of, I don't know, Sheriff of the United States. Which would have been Marshall, but whatever, I don't care anymore. This movie is abysmal. The acting actually saves Megan Fox, but no one else. The plot made no sense whatsoever. The attack on the centennial celebration was stupid and surprisingly uninteresting. I'm actually willing to say that most of the actors in this film elicited the question, why are you here? This film just doesn't make sense. It finger bangs physics into submission any chance it gets and gives Hex a completely unnecessary superpower. I'm giving this a turd blossom. It utterly pissed me off. Some isolated elements of this film work, but as a whole, it's just shit. That's 3 out of 10. I thought I'd be giving this a meh because it's so utterly forgettable. But you can't analyze this and give it a middle-of-the-road rating. There is too much stupid here. You don't forget it because it's dull, though it is. Your brain forgets it as part of a defense mechanism to protect itself from the movie. Just about everyone feels miscast. This is based off of a fun comic and a fun character... And it's not particularly hard to adapt. All you had to do was make a straightforward western with a disfigured bounty hunter, and instead they ended up making what honestly feels more like a Wild Wild West sequel. It's a turd blossom. That's 3 out of 10. There are two sides to Caveman. There is the intelligent side of Caveman, and there's the stupid side which talks in the third person. The intelligent side of me looks at this and asks, Why the fuck was this made? I'm a huge fan of Jonah Hex, 
I'm almost as big a fan of Hex as I am of Batman. This was not Jonah Hex. This was some crazy voodoo asshole who could bring back the dead. Judy McMutton Chops was like a throwback to the crazy dumbass villains that had come before. The weapons that he uses are mind-numbingly dumb. And you might be wondering how the stupid side of me views this film. Heh, <laughs> guns. Wait, what are they doing to Jonah Hex? No! So I'm giving this a turd blossom. I enjoyed the firefights, but that's about it. Look, this movie is terrible. It's not even as good as the sum of its parts. Josh Brolin is horrific in this. The makeup is bad, and this is one of those instances where CGI would have made it better. At least then he wouldn't have had to talk in that low growl, and they could have gone further with the disfigurement. As it is, he looks like he has bubblegum on his face. Thank God he went back to the Coen brothers, because they know how to use him in a western setting. None of this hubba bubba badass bullshit. The casting itself was weird. Megan Fox, Will Arnett, and Lance Reddick all felt ridiculously out of place. This doesn't even piss me off, it just depresses me. My knowledge of Jonah Hex mainly comes from a single episode of the Batman animated series that I saw when I was a kid. This is a turd blossom. It never got me angry, but it was just a depressing cesspool of a film. Before turd blossom, the media horror rating is a unanimous turd blossom. Hopefully the character who will be returning from the grave in our next review will be able to better represent the subgenre of movies based upon lesser known comics. Until then, we will be burying this movie as far down as we can. See you next time. I'm a cowboy on a